welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be taking you through a complex question for our bivariate data series. This is the second last video in this series. The next video will go through a different complex question with a different context and asking some slightly different questions. So in our question today, I've actually taken this from the QCAA sample exam on their website. It says 12 people of different ages ran around an athletics track for 30 minutes. The number of complete laps that they ran was recorded and the results are shown below. Firstly, you need to identify the response variable and the explanatory variable. Secondly, you need to use the statistics function on your calculator to calculate the y-intercept and the slope of the line of best fit. Then you need to interpret it appropriately, the y-intercept and the slope of the fitted line in the context of the data. And then D, given the correlation coefficient is negative um, 0.91, explain what that means in terms of the strength of the association. So I'm going to unpack this little by little, one question at a time. So firstly, we're asked to identify the response variable and the explanatory variable. So in this case, you need to have a think about it because you won't always be given the explanatory variable first and then the response variable second. So you're going to have to think about what makes sense. What would you plot on the x-axis and what would you plot on the y? Well, having a look at this particular question, if I think about a real life situation and I looked at, say, a 12 year old or a 14 year old, I'm pretty sure that they could run a lot further than a 70 year old. Although there are some 70 year olds out there who do some amazing jobs running marathons. So you can't always make that assumption that just because you're older, that you're slower. However, in the context of this question, my best guess would be that the age should be the explanatory variable because technically speaking, you do get a little bit slower as you get older, uh, as the body starts to age and the bones start to become more fused. So you would expect that if you got really very old that you would be able to complete much less laps. So I would say in the context of this question that your explanatory variable is gonna be the age in years and that the response variable that you're gonna plot on the y-axis would be the number of laps that you could complete. So that's part A. Part B, use the statistics functions on a calculator to calculate the y-intercept and the slope. So we're asked to find A and B. Now it does say the line of best fit and technically speaking, and you would know this from previous videos, the line of best fit is one that you're gonna plot by hand. However, the QCAA has told you here that you need to use the statistics function on your scientific calculator. So I'm actually guessing they probably mean the line of regression using least squared regression. So that's the more appropriate term to use. So let's jump out to our calculator now. I'm gonna reduce the screen a little bit. This is where it's going to get hard because I do get quite blind without my glasses on, but it's a vanity thing. Okay, so we're going to go into our statistics function on our calculator. So first we're going to click on our mode button and I'm using the Casio calculator here. Um, just as a little aside, if you are using a Texas Instruments calculator, which is some schools in Queensland, but a lot of our schools in South Australia choose the Texas Instruments calculator. And the reason for that is that it's pre-programmed to use the formula for line of regression as y equals ax plus b. But you would know from our Queensland syllabus that we use y equals a plus bx. So it's very important if you're using a Texas Instruments calculator that you are aware that you need to switch the a and b around if you're in Queensland. However, if you're in South Australia, you're using a different model for the equation of the line. Now I'm based in Queensland, so I'm gonna use the equation y equals a plus bx, and that's what the Casio calculator uses as well. So that's why when I calculate a and b here, it'll match what's on the QCAA's solutions. Okay, so we're gonna click statistics. That was just a little aside there. And number two, a plus bx, you could see that in there, that tells you what formula that the calculator is actually using. And now we're just gonna simply enter the numbers and you might wanna fast forward this a little bit, but I would recommend that you're doing it on your calculator at the same time so that you get really practiced at actually using this function on your calculator and fast at it because you wanna be able to do this very quickly during an exam and not take forever. Especially since some of these questions aren't worth heaps of marks, so you don't wanna spend it fluffing around trying to work out what you need to do and where you need to be. Okay, so I've entered all my X values. I'm gonna come across now and into the Y values. And I'm very fortunate that I'm doing this on a computer because it means I just press the enter button and it automatically moves me straight down to the next one. But you can press the equals button and that will drop you to the next box as well. Now I've entered my values for X and my value for Y. I'm gonna press AC, which means all clear. 
and don't worry it's still sitting in the background if I press shift and one now that takes me to my statistics functions now I'm asked to find the value of the y-intercept and the slope so I'm going to click on the five the reg button and there it gives me a and B so number one is the value for a that's my intercept 11.7562743 I could probably round that to three or four decimal places depending on the context of the question clear that off again and I'm going to find the value for B now so go back to five and choose not um, option number two and I've got a gradient of negative 0.1434 okay now I've written that down in my next slide on the PowerPoint so we can move on to that we can now state our values for a and b our intercept and our slope we weren't actually asked to find the equation of the line here but I've brought that together for you to show you how that would look part C now we need to appropriately interpret the y-intercept and the slope based on the context of the data so that means that however I interpret this intercept and interpret the slope I need to take into consideration what that means for age and number of laps that can be completed so firstly let's think about what the y-intercept means it's 11.75 so you've got the line starting at there on your y-axis and then it's going down towards the x-axis so what that's implying is it's the maximum number of laps that anyone could achieve ever is almost 12 approximately 12 or 11.76 laps that's the most someone could achieve based on this model now obviously you may get somebody like Usain Bolt or somebody really fast who could definitely do more than 12 laps in 30 minutes in fact you've got a 12 year old here who's done 12 laps in 12 minutes which is more than 11.7563 so you got to remember that this is a model it, it doesn't always match appropriately or exactly to the data it's just fitted to the data also our slope is negative so we can also infer from that that what that means is that as you get older or as age in years increases the number of laps that you can achieve will achieve will decrease and that makes a lot of sense too um, I certainly can't do as many laps now as if as I could when I was 13 or 14 however if I'd remained training all of those years and was an elite athlete hopefully you would expect that I could do even more so these models aren't always a perfect description of real life you can only interpret what the model is telling you based on this data set also I can interpret that gradient a little bit further remember rise over run so what that means is I've got a gradient of 0 0.1434 which is negative so what that means is is that for every year that I age that's my my run along the x-axis the number of laps I'm going to be able to do is going to decrease by 0 0.14 so that means that it would probably take me close to maybe nine years before I've lost a full lap so this is a very good a standard interpretation of what the y-intercept or the slope means in the fitted context of your data so you've got to think about what's the context and you've got to understand what gradient means you've got to understand that that y-intercept is either going to be a maximum if you've got negative gradient or a minimum value if you've got positive gradient and now we're on to part D we're told what the correlation coefficient is now we could have worked that out if we'd used our calculator we need to explain what that means in terms of the strength of the association so we're not being asked to talk about the direction because we talked about that in part C anyway we're not being asked to talk about R squared which is the coefficient of determination we're not being asked to talk about how reliable the model is we're simply being asked to talk about how strong is the correlation so we can say that it's very strong that's all that we need to do um, I would say the explanation could probably even be a little better Mrs McCludgey what are you thinking I could have written there something more that means that there is a very strong relationship between the number of laps and the aging years which indicates that the model is fairly reliable for doing predictions of an interpolation nature well that's all we have time for today I did tell you this one was going to be quick do stay tuned there's another video coming shortly that'll cover another complex question. Have a lovely day. Please subscribe to the channel and please follow us on Facebook. See you later.